Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm doing another video in my series of must-have makeup products and today, of course you can tell by the title, but this is my Wet n Wild must-have makeup products. If you have been subscribed to me and watched my videos, you all know how much I love Wet n Wild makeup. I have so many Wet n Wild products. I have used so many Wet n Wild products. There are probably a few Wet n Wild things that I have that I have never used, but for the most part, I have used most of the things that they make. So let's go ahead and jump into this. With foundations from Wet n Wild, I know so many people love the Photo Focus Foundation and unfortunately that foundation does not work out for me. It's one of those foundations that when I first apply it, it looks amazing on the skin, but it just does not wear well on me throughout the day. I've tried so many things to make it, you know, last longer, different primers, different setting sprays, no setting sprays, different finishing powders, nothing helps it. And then I do like like the Mega Cushion Foundation, but it's not really my go-to. That foundation is good for somebody that doesn't like a heavy foundation, like something not necessarily heavy, but that they don't like a full coverage foundation. They want something that's gonna be a light coverage that looks dewy and luminous. Um, the Cushion Foundation is a little more long wearing, at least for me, than the Photo Focus, but my must have foundation from Wet n Wild is their Coverall Cream Foundation. This was the first foundation I ever tried out from Wet n Wild and I fell in love with it. I used to use this foundation all the time. It was like my go-to everyday everyday foundation. This is light to medium coverage. It has more coverage than the cushion foundation and the finish on this is a semi-matte finish. For me, this is the most long wearing wet n wild foundation on my skin type. I have normal to dry skin. The only downfall to this foundation is the fact that they do not make enough shades in this. Especially with darker skin tones, they just don't have a good shade like range in this. My favorite primer, like my favorite must have primer from wet n wild is their photo focus dewy face primer. And I love this. This is a dupe for the Becca backlight primer filter. It is moisturizing. It has a luminous glow to it. This is a primer that I like to pair with my foundations that are matte that I want them to look more dewy. It's very hydrating and I love this primer. It's one of my all-time favorites. With under eye concealers, I'm not really a fan of the Photo Focus under eye concealer. It was long wearing on me and it didn't crease, but the shade selection on that is kind of weird. They didn't really have my shade in that. So if they do have your shade, then I would recommend that. I feel like that would be a must have, but for my coloring, I just couldn't find my shade. So I don't, that's not a must have for me. Now, the must-have concealer type of product for me is their Mega Cushion Color Corrector in Peach. And I love to use this over top of concealers, like in this area right in here, when I want it to be like bright, especially on days when maybe I didn't get enough sleep. I like to go in with this product. It's just a peach salmon toned concealer corrector and it's a cushion product. The way that I like to apply this is with a makeup sponge and I feel like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to really swatch this to show you what it looks like. I'm getting kind of low on this product, but it's just a really pretty peach color, great for brightening, so I do, this is a must have from Wet n Wild for me. This product is a long time favorite. I have used this so much in my videos, but this is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in Ticket to Brazil. And I love this bronzer. It is a satin finish bronzer, and this is a great bronzer for fair skin. It has a really nice warm finish to it, and I know probably swatched, it's not even really showing up. It is a really light bronzer, so if you have a medium to deep skin tone, this is not gonna show up on you. They do have another shade for darker skin tones, which is called Bikini Contest. And I do like that one for darker skin tones. I have used it on darker skin tones when I've done makeup and I do like that. This is just a beautiful bronzer to warm up your complexion. I love, 
I just love this. Another must-have Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer is their Reserve Your Cabana. And this is part of their bronzer line, but this is not a bronzer. This is a highlight, and it is a very subtle it's a really subtle highlight. Let me see if I can swatch it like right here so you can see it a little better. So if you aren't into those really intense highlights and you want something that's just gonna give you like a natural kind of glow from within, this is your highlight. So on days when I don't want a really intense highlight, I use this and this also doubles as a really beautiful finishing powder if you want a glow. So especially in the winter months, sometimes just like a matte powder can just make me look too dull. So when I wanna brighten up my complexion, I'll use this for my setting powder and it is beautiful as a setting powder. The Wet n Wild Color Icon blushes, these are my go-to blushes. I love these. My very favorite is in Rose Champagne. It's just a beautiful, just natural blush color that goes with any makeup look that you do. This is just my most used blush just all around in my makeup collection and I highly recommend this one. The other two that I like from their Color Icon Blush line, this one in the Apricot in the middle. This one is a little more like warm or peachy toned than the Rose Champagne. They're in the same color family as you can see, but this one is just more like coral and this one is more mauve. So I love that one. And I find that these are really long wearing on me. Really, like they have the right pigmentation where they're good to build, like they're easy to build up. And then the last one in this collection that I love is in Mellow Wine, which this would be great if you have medium to deep, like a medium to deep skin tone. It's just a beautiful, just natural coral. That's what that one looks like. So I love this blush color in the winter and fall. I feel like it's a beautiful fall blush color. It's not really wine. I don't picture that as a wine color. Um, let me swatch these other two so you can see what they look like. So this is Rose Champagne. Let me see here. It's kind of hard for me to see in the viewfinder sometimes, so I, so I use my mirror. This is Rose Champagne, so as you can see, it's a really pretty pinkish mauve. Like I said, that's Mellow Wine, and then this up here is Apricot in the middle. So those are just my go-to blushes, and I highly recommend these. These are definitely must-haves from Wet n Wild. Now, if you are a very fair skin tone, I do recommend these blushes. Um, I know on medium to dark skin tones, these are more like highlights. They're not super intense um, highlights, but on a fair skin tone, these are good blush colors. This is in My Thai Buy You A Drink, which I love that name. I think it's so cute. This is a really pretty like light um, coral or just like natural color this down here, which I feel like swatched, it's so hard to see, but it does show up on my skin tone like as a blush. Let me swatch it on the back of my arm where it's a little lighter. So that's my tab, buy you a drink. And then this one in the Princess Daiquiri's is a really pretty warm pink. Like it's kind of a peachy pink. So yeah, if you're super fair and you have a hard time finding good blushes that'll work for you, Love both of those. Okay, highlights. I love Wet n Wild highlights. I think they make some of the best highlights at the drugstore. The only downfall, at least for me, with their highlights is I can't really use too many, like I don't, I don't have a good selection for my fair skin tone. So the only one that I can use out of the Mega Glow highlighting powder line is Blossom Glow, which this is a beautiful pink highlight. I do love this one. It's one of my all-time favorite highlights. And it's such an intense, just wet looking highlight. So there's Blossom Glow there, as you can see. The other ones are just too, like they have too much color. So whenever I use them, it just shows up too much. I can use them as a blush, like a blush topper, but I can't use them as an actual highlight, but this one I can. So if you are a lighter skin tone, recommend this. Um, if you are a darker, like medium to deep skin tone, I do recommend the other colors. I definitely feel like those are must-haves. So 
their Mega Glow highlighters, definitely must haves. And then I debated on whether to include these um, highlighting bars from their Zodiac palette because I've heard that these are going to be part of their permanent line. So I hope that is true. If not, I'm sorry because they might already be like sewed out by the time you see this video um, if they're not part of the permanent line. But the two that I recommend that I really like is in Earth and in Air. And these are their highlighting bars. I don't know if I said that a second ago. Um, but Air is a beautiful pink gold. And I just love these because they almost have like um, a duochrome kind of finish on your cheekbones because it has like that pink gold tone to it. So for me, it doesn't show texture at all. It just looks really pretty. And then the other one in Earth is so pretty. This is a beautiful gold. A lot of golds don't work on my skin tone because they're just too yellow. Um, but this one is just like the perfect gold. So, whew, I thought about drop that. So there is Earth right here. So that's definitely a must-have highlight from Wet n Wild. I love all three of those. Another product that I absolutely love from Wet n Wild are their Color Icon eyeshadows. And I know this year they repackaged and reformulated their eyeshadows. And they are a little different than their odor formula. I love both of them the same. Like I love the old formula and I also love this new formula. I kind of wish that they would still have their old formula, but I mean, I understand why they redid it. They had had those forever and they wanted to add some transition shades to the palettes, which I really enjoy that they added those to the palettes. The ones that I feel are must haves from their color icon eyeshadow line the rose in the air palette this is probably my favorite palette from their 10 pan eyeshadows this is a dupe to the Anastasia or Anastasia Renaissance palette and I love this one it has a lot of matte warm tone shades and it has a few like shimmer colors like really it only has two shimmer colors and the rest are matte and I just love these tones because you can create some really pretty warm colorful looks and you can also pre create some just wearable everyday looks with it so i do recommend this one the comfort zone palette this has just been a long time favorite for me i loved their ode formula in this i love the new one it's a good everyday palette but it's also great when you want to add a little bit of color with the greens and the duochrome um, I do find in this palette, I feel like the green shades are so much more pigmented and easier to work with than in the Ode palette. This one has more shimmer colors in it than the Rosé in the Air. This one, the only matte colors it has is the transition shades. The rest are shimmer. And then the other one I would recommend, which I don't use this one too much, but I do like to keep it in my collection because it has some really pretty, like, cool toned neutral transition shades. It has a really nice matte black in here and a really pretty ivory color, which I like to put all over the lid or use it as a brow bone highlight. I love all three of those, and I definitely feel that these are must-haves from that collection. I mean, I like the not a basic peach but it's not a palette that I reach for as much I just find that I like and reach for those more the ones that I like from the quads the lights out which is a new one that they released this year I love this when I want to do a black or silver smoky eye the black color in this is so black it does have little like specks of glitter in it but those don't ever show up I really like this transition shade it's just different this is such a beautiful beautiful and unique shimmer color. It's kind of like a greenish gunmetal color. I don't know. It's just so unique. I also like the walking on eggshells. The silent treatment, I love that one as well. I have like a nail polish rack, like a acrylic nail polish rack, and I have all my palettes up there. And one day it just like fell out from that. It, I don't know. It just fell and my shade busted in that palette. So I need to pick up a new one. So I also like that as well. So those three are the ones that I recommend from the quads. 
And then the single eyeshadows, the two that I feel like are must-haves, Nutty and Brulee. Nutty is just a really pretty taupe. And I love to wear this either by itself, and sometimes I will pair it with like the Maybelline color tattoo in Bad to the Bronze. And it's just one of those colors that you could use it by itself, just put it all over the lid, a little bit in the crease, and it it's just a beautiful eyeshadow. And their little singles are like 98 cents or 97 cents or something like that. They're really cheap. And then with brulee, this is just a really pretty ivory color. It's great to use all over the lid, um, or you could use it as a brow bone color. So I do like this. This one is a little lighter than their original brulee that they had. So when they reformulated this, they made it slightly lighter, which works out better on my skin tone, but it's just such, a smooth and super pigmented, easy to blend out type of formula. Um, I mean, it's the exact same formula that's in their eyeshadow palette. Another must have from Wet n Wild is their Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. This is one of my go-to eyeshadow primers. It's got like a bunch of eyeshadow on it. It keeps your eyeshadows from creasing and keeps them vibrant and lasting all day long. And it's really affordable. I love it. So definitely a must have from Wet n Wild. With their liquid liners, I do like their Mega liners. Like the formula is really good, but the one thing that I wish that they would do on these, that they would change, is the brushes on these. They have like felt tip. They're not really a brush tip, and the felt tips get kind of ragged, and it's so hard to, you know, do a really precise wing or anything like that. So I wouldn't say that these are must haves. If they would change the brushes on these and make them like the e.l.f like the brushes that are on the e.l.f. liquid liners, then they would definitely be a must-have, but they need to fix that, and then I would consider it a must-have, because I do like the formula of their Mega Liquid Liners. Now, for pencil liners, I do feel like their on-edge long-wearing eye pencils are must-haves. I know that some people don't like these because some people don't realize that you can sharpen these with a pencil sharpener. Some people think that they're supposed to roll up or they just think they're broken so they don't know how to use them because I've read comments or I've had people comment on how do you sharpen these and you just put them in a you just sharpen them with a regular regular pencil sharpener but these are coal eyeliners and they are just so pigmented the black is just super black it lasts in the waterline forever it's a great liner to put like on your upper lash line and smoke it out once it sets up it does not budge those are just my go-to pencil liners. And for mascara, I know Wet n Wild makes several different mascaras and the only one that I like from their mascaras is the Lash Renegade. I would have said that that was a must have from Wet n Wild, but the last time that I got that mascara, I felt like it dried out so fast that it just wasn't worth it for me. So I would not say that that is a must have mascara for me. I know I also really liked the Lash Fanatic, I think, like the cat eye effect one. Um, the brush brush on it is sort of like the L'Oreal Butterfly Effect Mascara, and I do like that mascara. I haven't used it in a while, so I can't really say if that is a must-have or not. So I don't really have a must-have Wet n Wild mascara. So on to lip products from Wet n Wild. I used to not like their Mega Last lip lipsticks. I even said, because I have done a Wet n Wild Must Haves video like a while back on my channel. It's probably been three or four years ago since I did that video. But in that video, I told you guys that I did not care for these lipsticks because I felt like they were too drying. But I don't know if it's just because I've gotten used to matte lipsticks, but I actually enjoy these now. And I really like this color here, which is in Mochalicious. This is such a beautiful brown lipstick for the fall. It's like a brownish red color. It is just, sorry, it looked like I was flipping y'all off. It's just, 
It's such a pretty fall color, so I love that one. This one here in Cherry Bomb, and they are so long wearing. Like I wore them one day and it lasted through eating lunch. I had to touch it up just a little bit, but so long wearing. This one here is super pretty too, a really pretty fall lip color. That's in Cherry Bomb, which that one is a little more like moisturizing or it has a little bit more of a satin finish than Mocha Licious. This one is pretty matte. Um, and then this other one, which is in Bear It All, is a beautiful pinky nude. So that's like a great everyday nude color. I feel like my swatches are so weird now. I need to wipe all these swatches off so I can swatch better for you guys. And then there's another one that's a really pretty like pink red called Cherry Picking. That's also a really pretty like must have lipstick from their line. Um, I think I put it over here back in the lipsticks. Where did I put that? Oh, I think I put it in here. I forgot to get it out. I'll show you what Cherry Picking looks like. Which, let me wipe these, um, well, I'll just add it to these and then I'll wipe them off. So this is just like a bright, like, kind of just like a bright cherry color. So pretty. This is a really pretty spring summer color. So I do recommend all of those. And... <laughs> I'm so sad that Wet n Wild discontinued their Fergie line and they never like re like packaged these because this was my all time favorite nude from high end any drugstore lipstick, the Fergie Daily. This is just a beautiful everyday lipstick. Let me wipe these swatches off. But Fergie Daily was just the best everyday pink nude. So Wet n Wild, if you are watching this, please bring this lipstick back. I guarantee it'll be like your number one seller because I know so many people love, love, love that lipstick. Another lipstick that they used to have, which they discontinued, I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't even talk about these, but if you can find these online, highly recommend that you get these. The Black Orchid, this was just one of my favorite, favorite fall lip colors, which I know that um, this one here in Cherry Balm is kind of close to this, but the one in Black Orchid, this, it was just so creamy. It felt so nice on the lips. I loved this color, so I'm so sad that they discontinued those. Um, but the last lipsticks that I would recommend from Wet n Wild, which these are not discontinued. They have them in their line. This is the Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Matte Liquid Lipsticks. And I love this formula. It is slightly drying, but it's like what matte liquid lipstick isn't. But they are just so long wearing. I love these four shades. These are just my go-to shades that I use from their Mega Last line. So I know that they're kind of shiny because I just put them on. But once they dry down, they are completely matte. But Rebel Rose, Give Me Mocha, Missy and Fierce and Video Vixen. Those are my four most used colors and I feel like these would be most flattering on most people. So these are my four must-haves from that line and I love these. Sometimes I'll even top them with a gloss to make them more wearable. Um, so if, you know, matte liquid lipsticks, if you like the colors and you like the wear on them, but you can't deal with the matteness, top them with a gloss and a gloss that I recommend for those, any of the shades, is the Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker in Bare Enough. This is the most amazing lipstick topper, especially for liquid lipsticks. It's awesome. And I know this isn't wet and wild, but that's what I use when I want those to, you know, not be matte. The Perfect Pout Gel Lip Liner. The only shade that I really like, which I haven't tried some of the darker ones, like the red or, you know, the berry shades, but the nude one that I like is this new color, which is in Lay Down the Mauves. 
and my friend April from Wanna Makeup, I'll link her channel down below, she recommended this lip liner to me and I love it. It's really weird because in the packaging of this, it looks like it's gonna be really dark, but it is not. So that's what that shade looks like. It reminds me of my Rimmel Lip Liner in Addiction or my L'Oreal Color Riche Matte in Matte's It. It's kind of that same sort of mauve undertone and it goes really great with this liquid lipstick or that one. I mean, really you could pair it with any of those. It's one of those lip liners that goes with like any lipstick. So love that. And then with Wet n Wild, they do have some really good makeup brushes, which I have never used any of their makeup brushes from the Pro line. So I can't say that they are a must have. I'm sure they probably are because I know a lot of people rave about them, but I haven't tried them out personally. So you'll have to let me know down in the comments if you have used those and which ones you would recommend to me from their Pro line. But from just like their regular brush line, these are the ones that I recommend. The crease brush, like the blending crease brush, I love this. I use it all the time to like blend shadow in my crease. The angled liner brush, I love this for applying gel liner because it is really precise. This is also great to apply like powder brow products or like brow pomades to your eyebrow, so love that. This one here, I probably use the most out of the eye brushes, but this is their concealer brush. And I love to use this for like lid colors because it is so precise. You can do like a really precise placement of your eyeshadow to do like a cut crease. So love that. And then for the face brushes, the two that I use the most, the angled blush brush. I use this all the time for applying blush. It's one of my all time favorite blush brushes. And then their powder brush. I use this on occasion for either bronzing or for like setting, you know, my foundation with powder. So those are the brushes I would recommend from that line. But really all of their brushes are really nice. I love the design on these. Like I love the white and the pink. So you can't go wrong with any of their brushes. But those are just my most used ones and my must haves from their collection. Okay, and then the last thing that I would recommend from Wet n Wild and that I feel is a must have is their gel nail polishes. Like their, is it? 3-in-1 or something like that. You guys know I'm talking about the gel color. I don't have them out right now um, because I've been going to get my nails done and I just used the nail polish that they have there. But the color in Stay Classy was my favorite from that gel nail polish line. So I do recommend those. Um, so those are my must-haves from Wet n Wild. If I didn't mention a product that is your must have from Wet n Wild, please leave it down in the comments for me. Maybe it's a product that I haven't tried out yet because I know, like I said, I hadn't used their Pro brushes. There are a few things, like newer things, that I haven't used from Wet n Wild. So let me know down in the comments what your favorites are. And also let me know which like makeup brand I should do next, like must have products from. Let me know down in the comments. And I hope that you guys have a great day. Day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.